Valentine's Day is a booming multi-million dollar industry. Approximately 190 million Valentine's Day cards are sent each year. It is also the number one holiday for florists, with more than 198 million roses produced yearly for it. But where did Valentine's Day originate, and how did cards, the heart symbol, and Cupid become associated with it? Isn't the day named after a Christian saint? Roman Emperor Claudius II imposed a ban on marriages because too many young men were dodging the military draft by getting married. A Christian priest named Valentinus ignored the ban and performed secret marriages. He was caught, which meant that he was imprisoned and sentenced to death. While awaiting execution, young lovers visited him with notes about how much better love is than war, the first Valentines. The execution occurred in 269 AD on February 14th. He was declared a saint shortly after his death. Another Valentinus was a priest jailed for helping Christians. During his stay, he fell in love with the jailer's daughter and sent her a note signed, From Your Valentine. He was eventually beheaded. A third Valentinus was the Bishop of Terni who was also martyred. Romans celebrated a holiday on February 14th to honor Juno Fructifier, Queen of the Roman Gods and Goddesses, and on February 15th, they celebrated the Feast of Lupercalia in honor of Lupercus, the Roman god who watched over shepherds and their flocks. The Lupercalia festival began with the sacrifice of two male goats and a dog. Next, two young patrician Luperci were led to the altar to be anointed on their foreheads with the sacrificial blood, which was wiped off the bloody knife with wool soaked in milk, after which they were expected to smile and laugh. The sacrificial feast followed, after which the Luperci cut thongs from the skins of the animals, dressed themselves in the skins of the sacrificed goats, and ran around the walls of the old Palatine city with the thongs in their hands in two bands, striking girls and young women. This was supposed to ensure fertility, prevent sterility in women, and ease the pains of childbirth. As with most non-biblical customs found in the church today, Lupercalia was simply given a Christian-sounding name and adopted into the universal Catholic Church. It was Pope Galasius who in 496 AD changed the pagan holiday Lupercalia to St. Valentine's Day. Pope Galasius took the stories of several Catholic Valentines and evolved them into one Saint Valentine. This day honors Nimrod, son of Cush, who was the great-grandson of Noah. Other names for Nimrod were Pan, Baal, Lupercus, and Santus, or Saint, hence Saint Valentine's Day. The Encyclopedia Britannica indicates that Nimrod was also called Cupid. Nimrod was the original Valentine. It is said women lusted after him. The Romans called the festival the Lupercalia. This custom of exchanging valentines and all the other traditions in honor of Lupercus, the deified hero hunter of Rome, found its way into the church. This is how Valentine's Day came to be observed on the 14th of February. On that day, Nimrod's mother, Samarimus, was supposedly purified and made the first appearance as the mother and child. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments.